there have been a lot of recent advances in lab selection we need to know about. Today I'm going to talk about recent advances of lab selection techniques. I'm Dr. Nimal Gamage, I'm a member of World Academy of Cosmetic Surgeons. And in 1989, Dr. Jeffrey Klein, who is shown in this picture, and this is me, discovered the Thomson anesthesia. Before that, the lab selection was done under general anesthesia, and usually one in five thousand patients died due to the general anesthesia risk, and that was in good hospitals in USA. Even Thomson anesthesia is only safe if strict guidelines are followed, but with strict guidelines, nobody has ever died from Thomson anesthesia and lab suction. With the new technique of Thomson anesthesia, there are no complications such as found with the old technique, and these were like infections, hemorrhage, irregular skin results, pulmonary embolism, which is blockage of lung blood vessels with fat pieces, surgical shock and partial fat removal. Then later on we heard of smart lab suction which is laser lab suction as well as other names for this laser lab suction where usually NDR laser is used to liquefy the fat and the laser is introduced through a cannula after usually local anesthesia and the fat dissolves, sometimes the fat was left behind to be absorbed by the body or it was sucked out. And now we know this technique does not give any superior results compared to the power assisted lab suction which I use and is very popular today. And this only adds to the cost because the laser lab suction means usage of an additional machine which can cost quite a bit of money and the fat is heated and destroyed therefore this fat is not suitable for grafting purposes today we use a lot of fat removed from lab suction to enhance faces and enhance breast and buttocks as well as uh, neck region sometimes back of the hands therefore I have stopped using laser lab suction techniques and I have been using power assisted lab suction where yeah, only mechanical vibration is used. Vibration makes the procedure very comfortable for the patient because it provides additional anesthesia as well as fast extraction of fat without any trauma to the fat tissues. Earlier techniques where yeah, vibration techniques were not used and large cannulas were used, there was damage to the fat tissues causing bleeding which also brings infections as well as long term scarring of the fat tissue. With these techniques we never get any scarring of the fat tissue. And usually patients are allowed to go home 5 minutes after the lab suction and they can return to work next day. Most patients who do a lab suction are able to go out and eat on the same night and usually there's a little bit of swelling for 2 weeks which goes away completely within 2 weeks and the best results are seen within like a month. Patients are usually instructed not to engage in heavy exercises for about one week. And sometimes the fat can be very hard such as in a male breast or the back upper back fat and even this kind of fat can be easily removed with new techniques and we don't get uneven areas because usually the fat is softened with the solution before we start removing it. Even cellulite, which is the lumpy, bumpy fat you find in the buttocks and thigh regions, can be removed successfully with the new techniques. And like we mentioned before, if you do one area at a time, it's absolutely safe for the patient. And today we can even perform lab suction on patients with high blood pressure or diabetes, as long as these conditions are under control with medications that means a patient with diabetes should have their blood sugar at least below 150 and patients with blood pressure high blood pressure should have their blood pressure 
in the normal range. So there is no risk to the patient. Now people who want to stay in good shape can come and get liposuction done even if they have a very small collection of fat so they can maintain their figure very well. Even children over 12 years can remove their unknown effects safely. Old patients can now come and get this done because there's very low incidence of complications. Ultrasound assisted liposuction has been introduced recently with newer techniques, but ultrasound energy causes heat in the tissues, which creates scars within the fatty tissues that can be permanent. There's absolutely no additional advantage of using ultrasound technique except for adding extra cost to the patient. Although the fat cells are used for grafting, these fat cells are damaged by the ultrasound energy and the heat and are not really suitable for grafting. Coarse grafting is introduced as a technique of removing fat while applying cool temperatures over the skin. There has been a lot of recent hype regarding this technique but results are dismal and it causes a lot of pain and suffering without giving any significant result. You don't get skin tightening with this technique and eventually it will cost more money without getting any results in return. Massaging techniques are used. Different massages are performed sometimes even in hospitals without any significant result for the patient. It's usually a waste of time and money and absolutely no skin tightening happens such as in liposuction and fat doesn't even get removed with these techniques. And the reason for liposuction is to avoid loosening of the skin and disfigurement which happens after weight loss with diet and exercise. When you gain weight, you would put fat in the storage fat areas such as abdomen, back, outer thighs, inner thighs, under the chin area, underarm area and upper back. But these areas do not get back to the tight shape you had before by dieting and exercises. So the best thing to do is to come for a liposuction as soon as you are ready to go on a diet program. And therefore the liposuction techniques have become very popular especially with the safe techniques we have for patients today. And most people think you have to lose weight before you go for liposuction and that is the old school teaching from medical schools. But it's ideal that the patient comes right before starting a diet and exercise program and ideally it should be done before you collect a whole lot of fat because when you have a whole lot of fat it's very difficult to get very good results. And the other main reason for liposuction is that we can remove the patient's own fat and enhance other body parts with it. Now we know patients age because they lose tissue from the face and it's a volume loss which happens as we age. Sometimes when the face drops it looks square in shape and the face looks fatter but actually it is a big time volume loss which results in this shape. And most people think if you do fat grafting you get fat but actually more fat you put into your face would make your face look thinner and thinner because the lift you get makes your face look much thinner. In fact, a person who is about 60 years of age has probably lost about 30% of the fat in, the pers in that person's face from the age of 30. Although they may not know that putting the fat is the only way they can get a thinner face. And sometimes we use, we use fat grafting to lift the buttocks and breast. Breast and buttocks are also called beauty areas where your fat storage goes away as you age much faster than other areas because there are no stem cells in the beauty fat areas. But the areas of fat we call storage areas such as abdomen, back, underarm and thigh areas contain a lot of stem cells. Therefore, these 
uh, fatty tissues are resistant to aging so when you graft it into an area where your aging is accelerated you can arrest the aging process and make the person younger as well as slow down the aging from there onwards another question people always ask is is one fat graft enough for a face to look young is necessary that you replace the fat that person loses but if you come at a certain age for example at 40 years you can only replace the fat which has been lost therefore you need to do fat grafting repeatedly to maintain a younger and a prettier face and the frequency is up to the patient and sometimes you can get away with doing a fat graft once every two three years or some people might offer to do one more often similarly when you do a better graft or a fat graft to the breast to get the best results you may have to do it more than once but if the person is happy with one fat graft you can actually maintain that for a very long time because it's live tissue and as we remove the storage fat more fat will be deposited only in the areas where you have fat therefore you can maintain it with a good diet after a fat grafting technique is done you can use slab suction also when you remove lipomas before when you remove the lipoma such as in this case here you would make a big incision on the skin and you end up with a big scar now this can be removed by just a simple tiny hole which is 2 millimeters in length and a liposuction technique cellulite are the areas where you get abnormal fat commonly in the buttocks and the thigh region and the fat looks irregular on the surface because there are a lot of fibrous tissue which are attach, attaching your skin to the deeper structures and to remove these are very difficult with all techniques because it makes all techniques makes cellulite much worse because you don't remove all the fat and you don't disrupt the fibrous tissue as much with new techniques the fat can be removed more successfully and you can get even results even in patients with bad cellulite it's best to remove the cellulite before you have a big collection so you can get very good results and prevent further damage to these areas When you use all the techniques which are wrong, you get irregular results because fat is not completely removed and there are scarring inside the tissues. So you can get lumps and bumps and irregularities such as shown in this picture. You can fix some of these with the new techniques but once you have damaged the inner structures it's very difficult to remove the scars from inside the fatty tissue. So some of these cannot be even removed with new techniques and it's also important that when you do life suction you are just trying to look better and there's definitely there's no point taking a risk of death using all techniques and the techniques are available to you now even in Sri Lanka and I'm sure will be available with a lot of doctors in the future And with smart life suction using laser, there have been reports of death. And because the laser can damage your large blood vessels and cause bleeding. Also, the laser can damage the covering of the nerves. The covering of the nerves is a phospholipid layer in, in what we call Schwinn cells. And this can be damaged with laser. And you don't want to forget the surgeon's experience when you choose a surgeon for lab suction and it's important to remember that sometimes a very large number of lab suctions are required before a surgeon can become competent in this procedure and lack of skill can lead to wrong decisions as well as very ugly results and like I mentioned before when you get ugly results it's very difficult to fix it so it's very important to get good results in your first attempt and I have experience with about 12,000 lab sections up to now and we have always obtained great results for patients and there have been not a single mortality or any complications with my technique. 
After life session, it's important that the patient follows a good lifestyle to maintain the results. And the most important thing would be the proper diet. Proper diet, what we recommend is to stay on a plant-based whole food diet and avoid all toxins in the foods. Most people and even doctors are not aware that the diseases are caused by the toxins created by wrong foods. Wrong foods in this sense would be the animal foods such as dairy, meat, fish and eggs as well as sugar in the diet in the form of drinks, fruit drinks, cola drinks as well as some fruits and artificial uh, sweetness and MSG as well as trans fat which are mostly found in packaged foods. Then we recommend patients to follow an exercise program and it's important to notice that doing too much exercise can also be aging because you produce a lot of oxygen free radicals during heavy exercise so it, it is recommended that patients adhere to like 15 to 30 minutes of exercises especially an aerobic form of exercise daily if you don't do any exercises you can collect lactic acid and other toxins in your muscles and therefore a small amount of exercise is always beneficial for health as well as for anti-aging low stress cannot be all emphasized stress is one of the most important aging factors for everybody and for patients who are especially interested in anti-aging we recommend anti-aging supplements where we recommend four supplements to be taken daily as well as vitamin b12 injections to be taken one once a month and also glutathione injections intravenously taken once a month you had to avoid exposure to the sun if you want to look good on your skin and to avoid aging and wrinkling as well as avoiding smoking alcohol and drugs are very important for a proper lifestyle